got from uh, it's Hans had collected, but I got that from from um, what the name of it is. Here it is. It's a oh world. How's it going? So I'm here with the man himself, hey. Gary Lang. He's gonna give us a little tour of his fish room and share some tidbits about this and that. And uh, you ready to do this, Gary? Ready to go. Let's go. Awesome. Let's do it. <laughs> that was out in the uh, in the uh, in the pond this year I've got some red and centrus ornatus from Sears Creek two nice males in there you can see some of these uh, other smaller fish that look like pseudomagills there's pseudomagill Gertrude uh, they're the Aru twos that are in there and the other pseudomagills they look like Tinellus but they're a new species um, that I got from Dave Wilson uh, on the Northern Territory when I was in Australia so I've got a few of the babies they were not very good outside and then there are a few Glossolepis uh, multisquamata, and they're not many. I d um, the uh, Pseudomagills ate all the uh, multisquamata eggs this time, so it wasn't too good this time. Is this a female red? That's a female red, yep. No wow. colors on the females, but... Uh, She's still pretty, yeah, though, with the blue on her. Pretty, but not as pretty as those males in their tuxedo red. And yeah. Those, so they're pretty awesome fish. Gorgeous. And I've got four varieties of those, so we can, we can look at those as we go around the tank. So we're going to start with the Alani next. Oh yeah, sounds good. Okay. One of my favorite fish. I helped get this fish named. These are the Chillerthena alani, named for Dave, uh, for uh, for Miss Dr. Allen. So we had to go go by canoe upstream and then find these fish. And by the time we got back to the canoe, it was gone, and we had to hike down huh. five and a half hours to get back to the boat. So oh my, it's a. It, it's almost enough to kill an old fat guy like me, so just really pretty stuff. Oh, what do we have down here? We yes, we've got some fish that aren't really turned on right now. Melanotani species of uh, Moorhead River. These these get bright in the morning. It's a trifasciata DNA, but uh, it's not trifasciata. It's from uh, it's from New Guinea. So something Heiko collected a few years ago. And then I go down to the bottom tank here. These are fish. Uh, from Kali Webb. Um, are they a finis? I'm not sure. Are they Van here and I? I'm not sure. We're still waiting on the DNA. To me they look a lot like a finis, but it's a long ways away from where a finis was originally described. So for now we'll just call them species uh, from, from Kali Webb. Got the uh, my algae tank, but it also has uh, Gordia Rivers in it. So these are Melanotani Trifasciata Gordia Rivers. Maybe that'll give you a little bit better look. Really good Gordia rivers have that deep, beautiful red in them. Nice red. If I put the light on front, you can't see all the nasty algae in the back. So <laughs> I've got to really work on cleaning that tank up. But uh, nice big fish. Looks like it's dying off though. It's kind of getting rid of some. Of the SAEs aren't keeping up with it. I put a bunch in there, and all they're doing is eating the rainbow fish eggs. So I haven't gotten a one egg out of that tank. They've cleaned the mm -hmm. they cleaned the mop really, really well. So, is there, I've just got. Odds and ends fish in there, so we'll kind of skip that tank. We can go up here to my uh, my red-eyed dragons. So I've got a nice male multisquamata here. I've got some old fish too that are in there. I haven't had the heart to kill yet, but that male right there, that's that's a wonderful, that's a really nice, wonderful fish. And he's got a little bit more growth to do. Uh, we also have a uh, chiller Athena species Kali Kali Awon in here. So those would be fish. The the blue, all of these blue guys here. Okay, and they change. See how that one just changed colors? Yeah. They changed from gold to uh, to blue. Yeah. They changed back and forth. You kind of call the. Now, is it a fasciata? I'm not sure. 
it's it's a long ways away from one of the other places, Fasciatas, but they're everywhere. Notice the red pectoral fins on those guys. Mm -hmm. See see, that, see how they've yeah. got their red, and they and they they really are begging me to get them into another tank so I can start breeding them again. This this guy here has changed several colors. So that see those crazy, nice yeah. nice red pectorals on him. And that's the same. With, yeah, that, that's a female there, and that's oh, that's, a that's a male. But but see how they see how they'll, they'll change the colors. We see one that turns blue, and then the other. And he turns he turns copper and he goes back and forth back and forth. So sometimes you'll see a picture and go, oh no, it's supposed to be copper. And it's like, oh no, it's supposed to be blue. I've got you see that one. He just he just changed yeah, over. So, yeah. So the two of them are going to start fighting there for you. So I always so, believe yeah, that's look, how look they communicate. Yeah, there's a little communication. Marks. You know, yeah. the, the the males will get pretty. Oh, you got a good good one there. The males oh, will communicate to each yeah. other and then they also tell the females, hey baby, come over <laughs> here and, uh, and spawn with me. I'm the coolest fish in the tank. So that's kind of a neat thing. I want to stop at my, this is my fry baby. I, I saw this when I was at, at Lucas's house uh, several several months ago, I guess, and I said, you know what, I gotta make one of these, but uh, the, for me to make this, I had to make it so that the, I didn't, I kept the humidity out, so I put lids on them. I, I, put, a, I put a good seal on the, on the bottom tank so that, uh, the, you know, that, that uh, wouldn't, wouldn't leak out. And uh, the water level's only gone down just a little bit for a week and a half, so I'm, I'm pretty convinced that I've got that. Each one of these, I've got different rainbow fish in there. Um, let's see, here's my little fright. So I'm putting eggs inside this thing here. I put a screen on one side and opening here, so when the eggs the eggs are inside here, the water drips in there. When the fry hatch, they swim out the opening in like the front. I can start feeding them, and uh, that works pretty. That works pretty easy. So far, I've only had it set up for about a week, so it hasn't been. It has not been very long, so uh, those have. There are some fish that are hatched down here. I think. Uh, uh, oh, let me see. Yeah, uh, I think you can, I think you can see some. Oh, yeah. It's hard to come up with fry, and, and I'm going to get some lights on here. I just haven't haven't done, and I'm going to get some of the dimmable lights on there so that uh, I can just have it a nice low light. And once the fish are, you know, all hatched, all the eggs are hatched, then I can turn the lights up a little bit. But uh, I really don't want to put a lot of algae on here. And uh, the only reason I've got a bright light on the bottom tank was because um, some of the fry for a while were leaking through. The, the sponge wasn't working right, and I was getting fry down there, and so I was scooping those out and feeding those because uh, those those would get mixed up, and I couldn't tell the difference. So I'm not going to uh, do that. But I've got that problem with salve now, so that light is going away fairly soon. I think I'm going to put some of your shrimp down there, though, so they're going to be in the, the bottom section. That'll be a good so, cleaner. Yeah. They'll love that good cleaning mm -hmm. yeah. kind of filter there. Yeah. They get the mulm going and, and keep them going and keep them away from other fish because every time I put them in fry tanks, they end up eating after a while. So that's one of those things. I got it's time to stop stop doing that. These guys here are uh, Melanotanian species from Lubon Village. So I'm sorry I should have given you a better tag on those. And and um, they're a morning fish, so they're not they're not in their best of colors right now. But uh, maybe if they come out. Uh, and they're they're not. I don't think those are uh, are Van Heer and I, and they're certainly not a Finnis. And their their DNA has come out a little different too. So we that's really one of those fish that we're going to have to uh, describe. Those were gifted to us by Eric Roberts, so uh, we did not collect those ourselves. But it certainly is a. It, I'm pretty sure it's a new species. Um, here I've got some some odds and ends. I've got some. Uh, some McCulloch from Skull Creek, and I've got to get those out and get those breeding. And then I've got some of the Glossolepis dorotii in there, and they're not doing all that good. And then I've got a Pionapon Creek type fish, fish there. I've forgotten exactly which location it is. I'll have to have to find the tag. But uh, I, I'm not sure if I might even have some some bugs or something. And those males are getting really thin, so I might have to treat for parasites. I haven't done that in probably 15 years, so. But. Uh, they're looking a little thin, so I'm a little bit, a little He's bit worried a about this. Beautiful those. specimen. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. Those, yeah. Those Skull Creek. Yeah, I've yeah. got to get on, off my keister and uh, get those going. Down here we have another species, a Melanotini species. Maybe a Finnis, maybe not. Sorry, the lights are not as dark. That that gravel really sucks up the light too. Uh, but these are uh, uh, Melanotini species from Kali Rum. Kali means creek. So when you hear, hear us say Kali this and Kali that. We're talking about the, the, the creek is a small creek essentially what it means okay so and it's good to know they they get really nice looking they're right now they're they're okay when they really got their when they're when they're turned on they're really they're really good
good fish. It's, it's weird about rainbows. Some rainbows are great in the morning, some rainbows it takes them a while to, re to really get their colors. So these guys here were much brighter in the morning. The, these are the, uh, um, the uh, Melanotania uh, Van Durenai from Fowey Village. So that was one of the very first places I collected my first first time. So you can see some of those colors. But when they get going, see that one male, he, he's got kind of a funky nose job on him, but he really gets the good mm -hmm. reds in him. When they get going, they're just a they're just a wonderful fish. That's about as big as they've ever gotten for me. So um, DNA is definitely different on those on the finis. So they are different. Um, we we're pretty sure they're they're Van Urenai. So we haven't had any Van Urenai from the type locality to check. So we don't know for sure. But uh, I think I think it's safe. It's right in the area where Van Urenai were collected. So I'm safe in calling them Van Urenai. Go down to the tank below here with the nice crypts and everything. These are Melanotania species Aru 4. Heiko collected these with Melanotania species Aru 2, which is now picked it, but these are Aru 4s. Guys, turn sideways, I'll feed you. Oops, I should, you know what I need to do is turn the light uh, like this. Ah, there you go. There we go. I move the light over. Yeah. But then they get all excited. Once rainbows hit the light, a lot of times they'll get excited and they show you more colors. But, but these have goldie eye type DNA, so if they're from the goldie eye clad. Or the other fish he caught on the same island were, um, were trifasciata like so uh, from the Australia, but this is an island in between New Guinea and Australia. These are the Aru 4s, and they're still undescribed. We slide over here, and we can see the fish that is now called Picta. And I've got one male in here, and the rest of these guys are kind of juveniles waiting to grow up. I can get that male to show up. I'll feed you if you come with the tank. Mm -hmm. and, and, and right now, they're, they're not in showing very good colors. When they get going, this this is a lot of people's favorite oh, fish. So nice. They really get going, but you know, hey, this Come one on, is showing a little bit. But this guy here, mm -hmm. and I don't, I'm not sure he's even much color. So yeah, this guy's really showing. Yeah, but they they get a lot nicer looking than that. They just when you see them, they're they're just uh, they're just going crazy. I've got some small uh, Blair eye here. This is Chilarthena Blair eye. This is going to be a real party animal when they get going. They're um, they. They're going to probably get a third bigger in weight, maybe even 50% bigger in weight. And, and they're an afternoon fish in the morning. They don't look like much in the, in the evenings. They just get they just get wonderful. They start getting to see the stripes on them and everything. They, they get that stripe going and everything. Just just a great, great, pretty fish. Certainly, certainly, I gotta say that's probably one of the top 10 fish to have. So it's going to have a rainbow that that would certainly be on the list. Guys up here, this is an afternoon fish. I mean, this is a morning fish, so he's already not showing his colors. This is a uh, Monotania Eric Roberts eye. And I've only got a pair left, so I'm working hard on getting some eggs out of those guys. Um, they look a lot better than that in the uh, in the morning, but right now they just don't look like anything. But trust me, they're cool fish. When you've got some of those fish from the birds, head, the best thing to do is turn the lights off while you're eating dinner. You turn the lights back on, they think it's morning, and all of a sudden you've got pretty fish again. <laughs> This is our Wapoga laser, Melanotania rubavatata. Looks like a praecox, has stripes down the center of it, a red stripes, uh, but it is not praecox via the DNA, so it's definitely a different species. So again, this is the fish that we collected in, in the same areas that we collected. It actually same streams as Chilarthena alani. The water was tanning, acid. You couldn't, you could hardly see through it. it the rain was coming down. We we're getting snails in her. Sw swimsuit and everything and yeah. stick and everything but uh, we we're catching these beautiful fish so we didn't care but uh, I think they're pretty cool oh, they yeah. look better when you put plants in there but I had an algae break out on the tank so I had to take it out of there and I needed to get eggs so we we're putting eggs everywhere but in the mop so I had to had to get them out of there for a while and the female and male difference reminds yeah, me so very, much of very, the gray yeah, too. It's exactly the same thing. They've almost got like a yellowish fin. It's really a clearish fin. It's really easy to tell the difference. It's like so. a praycock yeah. with extras. Yep, praycock on steroids. Are right. right. Well, that, they actually I say that because these these are much more active. A lot of times praycocks just kind of they're kind of easy swimmers and everything. And these guys are a little bit a uh, little bit more aggressive, move around a little bit more. And uh, I kind of like the, I kind of like more movement yeah. in my fish. We can go to Australia here now. This is a Melanotania maculakai. Well, we saw maculakai in that other tank, and look at the difference. I mean, they still got yeah, stripes, but they're very, difference. very different. These are, uh, and this male is going to show up for us a little yeah. bit. So uh, maculakai from Yubanangi Swamp. So say that three times really fast. Mm -hmm. So yeah, get the That's get how the you say it. Okay. And probably the Aussies will tell me, no, you screwed that up too. 
<laughs> but it, it, is, it was kind of a cool place. I did not collect that fish, unfortunately, but uh, we did collect some Gertrude from that many years ago. I don't think I have those around anymore. Oh, this is an ugly fish down here. No. <laughs> oh, this is a fish name for me. This is Lanatania Gary Langi. And he, some of these are my wild caught males from quite a while ago, so that's why they're getting a little old and long in the tooth. Some of the younger ones, um, there's some females in there, and I've also got yeah, some fish, fish from the bird's head, which is a Miato village. So, uh, so the ones that are goldy eye, well, not okay. I wouldn't say goldy eye looking, but those younger ones, those, those are Miato village. Those are not Gary Langai. Gary Langai are McCulloch from the McCulloch family. You can see how they've got stripes in them, just like mm -hmm. the other one we saw. See oh, so they are from yeah, the McCulloch yeah, family. Yeah, they're from the McCulloch tribe. Oh, they're, okay. you know, they're not McCulloch, but they're they're from that whole. And when you look in the southern side of New Guinea, that's where you find a lot of and uh, of the island of New Guinea, you'll find a lot of these striped fish that are. You know, about you know two inches to three and a half inches long. Uh, the McCulloch eye that we're talking about here, the Ubangi Swamp, and the other ones, those are from Australia. But uh, there are also Sexliniata are from from New Guinea, and they've got the same same type of stripe patterns. There are several types that are from that Papua are in that same category. So very cool, interesting. Got Ron Bowman eye down here while you're down on the floor, and uh, I, I unfortunately I forgot to clean that tank, so. Oh, yeah. You can see they are, they are very still. cool fish. Again, when you do the DNA, um, they they relate to the Goldie Eye tribe. They're not Goldie Eye. Hmm. They're certainly unique and different. And Jerry Allen described those for our friend in uh, in uh, Ank the Ankva uh, organization, Ron Bowman. So um, it's really a nice fish. And what, right now they're they're not showing much of their color when they get going though. They they really will shine their colors back and forth. So very nice. Very nice. Now you kind of get that purplish belly. Yeah. Yep, they actually get I love really, that. really some beautiful colors. Next tank up, there's orange varieties and yellow varieties of this fish. Melanotania sicviensis. Um, I believe the original name was was um, Ism before it got a got a name okay. on it. Okay. So, yeah. um, and the, if you look in into Amazonas magazine, you'll see some articles written by uh, Hans Evers uh, several years ago. I got a mop of these from him a few years ago. And Got them spread out to some of my other rainbow fish friends, and currently working on these. So hopefully we'll have some of these in the springtime. Nice. That with my rainbow fish breeding rack, I should have a whole lot of everything, right? Yeah, I so saw you had a bunch better, of babies of these in there. I'm going to be in trouble. Yeah, there's probably at least yeah. 15, 20 yeah, babies yeah. in that one container. Yeah. Now hopefully I'm going to have have that for everyone. Uh, this tank, I totally apologize for not cleaning this tank up because we've got some pretty fish in there. Some. So peak, uh, on the, the empires are not looking very good at all. And Rewara Village don't, again, that's a fish from the bird's head, and, and at, in the afternoon they go to sleep. They just don't have very good colors. In the morning they're intense, they're almost pink. So they're, they're really cool in the morning, but in the afternoon they're like, eh, whatever. And they, they go to sleep on you. Now when you say bird's head, you're talking about Papua New Guinea and how it looks like a turkey. Yes, right? it looks looks like a turkey. Absolutely. Yeah. So you see the see the far western side. You've got that sort of head. And if you look at it, you'll see like the neck, and they talk about the bird's neck, and then you see the whole body, and then you almost have a tail on it. So take a look at the uh, New Guinea, and you'll you'll see that that uh, works in there. Maybe you can splice in a picture of of uh, New Guinea that way people can see it real easy. Mm -hmm. So we go to this tank here. Um, oh, I, I didn't pull the lights forward. gives a good description of where they're kind of coming from. Yeah, this again, this is a fish from Bird's Head that always, almost always stays bright. And right now, these, I would say that these Bozeman are not very bright, but the, these are from the Antinjo village, which was on Lake Uder. Heiko collected this this particular collection years ago. It's a little bit smaller than the one we see in the hobby, uh, but it's also a much more intense blue. You can't tell it right now the way these colors are going. We'll look at another fish from uh, from Lake Uter also from another Bozeman eye from there, and I I think I w I looked at him a couple of minutes ago and he was pretty bright. So hopefully he'll be he'll be happy for us and show off. Um, hey, these guys are not looking good. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you get great looking fish. Sometimes not. Uh, Chulathena fasciata from Cali Biro. So the Cali Biro means Cali is blue. A stream blue, Biro is blue. So these are from the very beautiful blue stream that was uh, was close to Lake Nagawambu, but uh, certainly not Lake Nagawambu. It eventually flows into that, but uh, those males get about twice that size when they get going. But he's just not going to cooperate for us. So they're so being shy. That's what happens. Down here is the fish that I got from Jerry Allen many years ago, um, uh, Melanotania Herbert Axelrod eye. 
and I, I left these in a, in a tank a little too long, a smaller tank too long, so they're a little snub nose. But uh, you've got the nice bright yellows and, and the nice, uh, nice orange on the fins, and they're thicker than some of the other uh, fish. Some of the fish in um, in, in Europe they've been calling uh, Her Herbert Axelrada, and when they did the DNA on them, they found out they actually had uh, Trifasciata cross in them. Hmm. So, unfortunately, some of the first fish that got in there ended up being that way. Oh, trying to get off the floor is tough. Uh, I'm getting old. Yep, it is what it is. <laughs> We're going to look at my odds and ends tank. Yeah, I've got, uh, I love this I, sort of, I call it the sort of the CYA tank as well. Mm -hmm. Look at this guy here. He, isn't, isn't he showing his colors off right there? That is a uh, Chill Athena up, upper tour. So, and you know, we, we could look at the fish in the bottom tank later and see that they almost look completely different. So, a bear tank like that mm. looks different. I've actually seen these turn black in my yeah, yeah, they will turn. We've got Glossolepis multisquamata in there. We've got a, a Lorenzi type that's probably Lorenzi. I'm pretty sure, and he's showing off really nice. These these are going to go into a breeding tank very shortly. This one here is a. Uh, I have to think about that because I've only got one male in there. He was being a butthead and a lot of clavia, a lot of clavia is, is his name. He's he's pretty nice. This fish here is um, I, again it's an Ogilvy eye. Again, see the stripes in it? It's coming from the southern side, so it fits into the McCulloch clan. So does that help with the flashlight or is that just um, is that a little does bit. It? No, it helps. Okay. It, yeah, it's helping. Okay. If if it does if it doesn't yeah, I'll take it off. It's that showing way its okay. true color. I'm trying to trying to show it but you got a male there. Um, I've got an extra couple odds and ends lacustris in there. I've got some some Chilarthena uh, axle rod eye right there. There's a little one there. This is a Chilarthena fasciata from uh, from Family Village. Uh, let me see what else we hear. Oh, here's a yeah, Glossolepis cabaya. That was the one that was originally called multisquamata also, but you see it's got short fins. It's from the far eastern side, and that and the original description was multisquamata from the far western side. They have nice smooth fins. The uh, multisquamata, nice big dragon red eye. They've got the ragged fins once they get big, and they're and they're much longer too. So that's how you tell the difference. We've got a couple of fish that probably shouldn't be in there, but I can't. Nice can't Allen eye. Oh uh, yeah, nice nice Chilarthena Allen eye from Cirovo. So they look very very different than the Allen eye we saw before with all those reds. We've got almost you know, or, or all the yellows. These have reds and blues and. You almost look at them and swear that's a different species, but uh, they say meristic wise it's the same. Let's see, have we missed anything else in there? Um, oh, we've got. Uh, what are these guys? Yeah, I'm gonna. Sierra or Senior or That's it, right? I was having a senior moment there. So. <laughs> Too many species after a while. See, even right. I forget the name, so. <clears throat> but that's that's odds. I've only got males in this tank, so I hit. I uh, I've got a group of uh, about 15 or 20 babies coming up, and hopefully I will have uh, some uh, something else to show for that, and I'll be able to get breeding those again. So why at that level? Should we go to the tank right across from you? Yeah. Or, or go lower? Okay. Go that. high, low, low. Okay. Turn turn right on. Okay. Too. Don't scare everybody. Um, we've got uh, uh, Melanotania rubrostriata from. Uh, Oh, where is the cave are? So they've got whites on the bottom of their fins, and they, they get a lot bigger than this, so mm -hmm. fortunately not showing as, as good a color as they normally do, but that's that, there's a decent male right there, so we've got some whites on it. And some of those males had almost complete white on there, so I'm hoping to uh, to work on that color and get get that color back. Um, there's another Pianifon Creek type of, of fish, probably Lorenzi, from the Lorenzi strain, if not something new. We'll have to have to decide. There's a couple males and females, and I got to get breeding on those. I've got some parvas, and this particular parva right now is just he's on vacation, so they don't have mm -hmm. much color in the morning. Sometimes they have fantastic colors. When we go over into the uh, corner. I have good. another. Yeah, I have another location of parvas that's almost always orange. So um, we'll have to see what see what that looks like when we get over there. So shall we drop down here and look yeah. at this goldie eye? This thing is huge. They're, they're stained right on front. You could probably just. I don't think I need to put a flashlight on those. Mm -hmm. I got these fish. These are adult, uh, wild caught adult fish. That uh, well, I caught them in 2010. So now they, yep, now they're going to swim in the corner because you want to photograph them. I wish I could give you guys an idea of how big these really it's are, big, but even big, putting my hand up yeah, there doesn't yeah. do it justice. It's it's about a what well, I'd say probably about a five and a half inch fish, but uh, he's probably three and a half inches wide. So. It's like a little bluegill. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, huge. Almost, so they've had that four foot tank for quite some time between them, and we're breeding quite successfully. And now I'm uh, working on my F ones. I'm not getting very many eggs out of them anymore. He's he killed off all the other females. There's just one lone female in there. And he uh, stomped the other male in there, so there's only one male in there now. He's picking on that male, so it's getting a little bit a uh, little bit intense, but. Uh, but they are they are cool fish and, mm. and I'll tell you what he's not looking that good right now in the morning when the lights first come on he's freaking awesome mm -hmm. because he just is an awesome creature so they're that, one of my favorites that, that you know and you always want to say Goldie Eye and the location because I I think and a lot of people I think believe that a lot of these Goldie Eyes whatever the location some of these are going to change to different species so this is Goldie Eye Dakai I think I would keep keep that one separate from from any other goldie eye types that you get. Mm -hmm. And even from like the pictas and other things like that, it could be easy to get them confused because a lot of the, the root four, yeah. the yeah. root two. Oh, yeah, absolutely, you keep them yeah. separate and the females all, all look very much alike. You only missed another rack in the other room that had some goldie eye on it, so we'll have to go back for that too. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you just see all the, all the different ones. While you're down on the floor there, you gotta go. And oh yeah, go gotta look they're, they're, they're starting to show off pretty good right now. These are Chilarthena species, it's an unknown species, upper tor. So when we caught these, this was in a just a total limestone type stream. It had the karst topography, it had holy rock in it and everything, but the, but it was just an, a very, very clear stream. So we could look down and see four and a half, five inch males, so they, they get even bigger than this, just sitting there, they're, they're shining in the water, flashing is what we call that, that stripe that gets from their nose to their dorsal. Um, just doing that in that clear water. It was just kind of a neat thing looking off the bridge and seeing all those fish in the water. Yeah, that sometimes, would have been really neat. Yeah, sometimes you get so excited, you know, you want to get in the water and collect mm -hmm. stuff, but other times it's just nice to just sit there and enjoy stuff and, and just really, really watch the fish. That's why we get fish anyways, to watch them, right? Exactly. And that's, I, I, I've got some hard, uh, that, that substrate in there what is, is one of those, it, it, it's 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 one of the seachem products mm -hmm. um, and it and it's and it, uh, I, it's got a sand base to it too but it makes the water hard so that water is probably um, two or three degrees carbonate hardness more than my my normal water which is fairly soft and so I can grow some of the harder water crypts in there and, uh, and stuff but but they they seem to enjoy it since I knew they came from hard water I just went with that way and I can enjoy some of the crypts that don't grow very well in my other tanks in there. Oh. Stay down on the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is around. this is a fish that everybody knows is a finis, and you should call it a finis pogway because um, it will be changing its name. Let me do a quick wipe on here. Maybe that won't show up. But uh, they've got red stripes. DNA wise, they're different than a finis, and a finis from the from Lake Santani area was described first. So. These will be something else. So if you have a Finnis Pogway, just keep it in, keep it noted. It will change its name eventually. We saw the Goldie Eye before. Here's some young Goldie Eye. Yeah, they just don't look as good in the bear tank. But you can see some of the colors on those males are showing up. But the, it's just not as good as having a plant tank. And this is not the best way to put your fish in your tank. But I only had so much room in my fish room, so. Um, some have to have to live in these tight quarters. These guys are coming out of here soon and going to a much bigger tank. Next fish over, I think I'm pronouncing this right, Melanotani etonensis. Heiko Blair collected these quite a few years ago. Um, now they, they get a lot bigger than this. Uh, they, he was showing fish that were about five, five and a half inches at least. Really big long fish, lot, lots of color and everything. Uh, looks like it's goldie eye DNA. Um, uh, again, but it's it's a different different species, but it's but it's in that tribe of goldie eyes so related to those guys. The next fish over is when it was an accident. We collected some little fish. Actually, Johannes Graf collected some little fish at uh, at Gittemann when we were there, and and you can't get to Gittemann anymore. The airport doesn't uh, is in an operation. I don't want to walk 20 miles. Um, but uh, but we collected some little fish. We thought they were chiller thing. Oh, he's showing off for you. Oh, put, what a put, good some, boy. put some food in the tank for him, but uh, but he brought those back thinking they were baby Chilarthena, and they turned out and said, Gary, those are not Chilarthena, they're Glossolepis, and they're something totally different. So so that's another fish that we've got to describe. These are really neat. Yeah. Here he comes. This is my next one, rainbow. Yeah. He's, he's showing some colors too, so yes, 
And now you sit there and everybody would be saying, Gary, you need to get that fish in a planted tank because it will look a lot better in a planted tank. Odds and ends growing up in there, so we got this and that, so nothing, nothing really to, to look at. Look at the next tank here. We've got Monotania trifasciata, a yellow variety from Papin Creek. Now, originally, this the first variety that they had collected in Australia from Papin Creek was a bright yellow. The second time they collected it, it turned out to be more of this orange color. Let's see if I can talk everybody and then come to the front. There we go. But uh, trifasciata are really nice fish. They're, they're easy to breed. They get pretty good size. Um, the, 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 the eggs are you know easy to hatch and everything. So certainly a fish that's worthwhile worthwhile keeping. That bright yellow, you can see why they could confuse those with Herbert axolotl, especially the females. Okay, if I can get my big boy here to turn around, oh, he's not happy. So, so if I know most of you say, gee, if I could get a Bozeman eye to turn that colors, I'd be great. <laughs> uh, the big one is just going to sit there and look at us instead of. Oh, yeah. Okay, now he's going to go to the back. But when he gets going, his his head is almost completely black. Maybe I'll turn the light off. On his, your eye well, like the whole front. Kind yeah, of it's just turned, but it's just black, blue black. It's just so black. And if you look at Corey's videos, he's, he's got a video of my fish room, and it, and it actually turned that color, so you can see that it, it really was a fantastic color. Come on, buddy. Yeah, it's hard to keep him in focus. You just kind of get him get him there when he's moving. That's what he did for me for, for weeks and weeks, and finally one day when Corey was here, he just turned sideways and, and just perfectly gave Corey a perfect, perfect shot. It's like, oh, see... I've been telling everybody how cool he looks and finally got to see just he was as cool as I said. But those come from from Lake Uter. So it's a little bit smaller fish. Those are pretty much full grown size. Ah, uh, sorry I lied. The par, par, par was stinking this tank too. Most of the time they're bright orange. That's what they go to. So uh, what you do is you turn the lights off on them while you're eating lunch, eating dinner. Turn the lights back on and they think it's daylight and they turn bright orange all over again. So. That's the way it goes. Yeah. You want to go into the upper corner over here? This yeah. is sort of odds and ends. In the very uh, far corner, oh, you got those. Those are the uh, the uh, pseudomagill cyanode or salus. We've got the neon neon blue and, and a bright lemon yellow. They're just fantastic when the light hits them. And uh, it's a salty tank, though. It's 1.016 specific gravity. That's one and three quarters cup of salt for five gallons of water. So. I put a silicon seal around the top of the tank, I put saran wrap on that and then put the lid back down and let it dry so that way I made myself a nice little little uh, gasket so that way the salt doesn't get out and drip all over the place. That's the easy way to keep those. Um, you don't have to go through all the craziness that saltwater people do. I take a sponge from another tank, threw it in that tank and yeah, as you see there's probably what, what do you think, 80 fish in that tank? There's a bunch. And it's a 10 gallon tank and it's got one sponge filter running it. so. Um, <clears throat> they're quite easy. They they eat live baby brine. If you can't do live baby brine, keep turtles <laughs> you know, because it's just you go on the far back there. You'll see uh, other fish. Those are the Wallace Road. That's a new species. Um, there's one really nice male in there, and I've got to get. They they've got to come out of that tank. So uh, I see separate him. and get some of those guys out. But the, if he's gonna if he's gonna behave for you, there's there, he ain't stuck in the back. Maybe keeping him in the corner like that has made him skittish. I think I put yeah. him in the planted tank; they'll be a lot happier. The females aren't it. shy. Yeah, yeah, they they want food. Mm. The tank next to the cyanodrosalis, that's their, that's the uh, Monotania species running river. And I've got one male that's kind of the alpha male, and that's showing some good colors. If you go on the running river project, you'll see some much better pictures of them. So uh, they are they are pretty fish though. That's still an undescribed species. Uh, Peter Unmack was able to take that fish, breed a whole bunch of them because they were already crossbreeding. Somebody put Splendida in the area, made sure that he had the running river DNA, crossed a whole, uh, bred a whole bunch of them, and then put them in, in the river above the waterfall so that way nothing else could get in there and mess up with them. So hmm. he was able to save that fish. And a lot of fish clubs in the United States helped with that project. Hmm. Next thing over is named for the editor of the IRG, the farmer editor who's, who's passed away. Uh, uh, Grunwald and this Monotania Grunwald eye. And uh, they're not showing their colors right now, so you look at that fish and go, yeah, whatever. But when they're on, they're a nice fish. So if you 
kind of do a little look up on Grunwald, uh, you'll find. Kind of along the stage. lines of a Bowmanai too. Yeah, it, it's from it's from from sort of the same area. So it was on the Sirawo trip that we discovered that fish in the Bowmanai. And mm. Those were the two two that we found, but they were in different er, different river locations on the other side of the mountain. So I don't know if you can get pictures of those, but that's another Radna Centris. That's from Punan Creek. Yeah, and we can see these yeah. over there, right? Yeah. 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 They're, they're, so let's go ahead and they, show they're, the they're people this. Okay. Why we're doing that? Okay. Yeah, these these what? are super yeah, awesome what? here. Yeah. This, yeah this is a different the hose. one here because it looks like somebody's almost inked these out, and, you know, black ink on those things. So, so that's why you keep this uh, the locations of your redness centris and all your rainbows. It's really important. But uh, see those and and the uh, a little Werner eye that are they're flipping around. Those two won't crossbreed. So any eggs that I get out of there, I uh, I, I know they're they're true. But uh, they're just a really pretty pretty red and centrist so I enjoy those Have that's a different Werner eye too yeah. yes it is it's if you take a look at the name right there I don't even want to try to pronounce it Gumbawaldi River yeah that's that I got that from from uh, when I was in Australia from, from Dave Wilson so he's breeding that fish in the Northern Territory so really nice fish and I want to I want to keep get some location fish going we've never had a location fish for Werner eye in the United States hmm. so that's that's a new one. Let me see. Do we? We're pretty much. There's not really not too much on the upper rack to to worry about. Um, odds and ends in here. These guys are really cool. Oh, I definitely want to oh, talk yeah. about these. Yeah, the the hardy heads, and uh, you can point at the name. The Cretacephalus is a genus name, and and uh, I'm not sure how to. I've heard people say that name before, but Cretacephalus stercus Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what he said, and then there's also some some uh, Pseudomegal signifer that I got from Leo O'Reilly on the Al Amamore Creek. So they're both throwing eggs right now. The uh, the Cardi heads throw a huge egg, but the fry that comes out is just the tiniest little fry. Mm. And I've only managed to raise three three fries, so I've got to get off my backside and start working on those. So hopefully the the breeding rack will help me with that, and I'll be able to get some of those guys out. But uh, fairly easy to breed. You just feed them black worms and boom, you get get lots of fish. There's mm -hmm. odds and ends fish in there. I've got a lot of uh, little lot of them. Bowman and I growing up. I've got some nigrans growing up in there. And that's, that's just that's, a 10 gallon, right? Yeah, yeah that's just 10, 10 gallons. So and how often do you yeah. change the water? Oh, I change the water at least once a week on these tanks. A lot of those tanks are even twice a week. So that's a tank that's begging to, um, that they need to be out of there in some place else. So it's just... You know, sometimes you just run out of room after a while. So. Yeah, can never have enough space for tanks. That's true. I could double and my fish. space and still be crabbing about there. Right. <laughs> so in here, I have a new species of rainbow. Um, it is called the uh, from the oxybill. So, oh, the, so oh. that's that's the name there. We're, right now, it's oxybill rainbow. Um, it's it's goldy eye looking, but they only get two and a half inches, three inches maybe. So those are these fish here. The red ones are uchiensis, but the, and you guys may have seen that one. This one here, that male will turn sideways for me. Come on, buddy, turn sideways. Over here. And here, fishy, fishy. It's like you're going to feed them, and then they'll. Then other times you open the lid, and then they run. So. Mm, right. Okay. There you there, go. There you go. Everybody's up. But you can see from some of these red males that they're really, really got nice reds on. And the Uchiensis, that's pretty much the size of an Uchiensis. They don't get a whole lot bigger than that. Um, they, they'll get a little bit bigger, but nice reds in those. So. And that's a fish from Australia. The uh, the, the oxybill are the fish from the. the from mm -hmm. He's starting to yeah. color up a little yeah. bit. They get a little bit of blue in them yeah. and stuff, yes, don't a they? Lot of, a lot of blue in that. A lot of blue. Really intense yeah. Also, so they need to go back in a planted tank again. So I haven't to haven't put them in a planted tank in a while. So odds and ends fish again. Um, you know, I've got a couple of these. There's a uh, there's a Melanotani species puar, which I call the big ugly. Um, mm -hmm. It is. These guys here, these fish that have no color whatsoever, they the best I've shown was just a little bit of blue in them and a little bit of red, so a Pianophon Creek type that are in there. And then I've got a, a group of Melanotania um, Affinis type, which uh, Awolim. So, uh, and there, there are a pair in there that I've got to get out and breed. So there's there's one of the males. They're not showing very good colors right now, but the, but he shows decent colors when, when they're turned on. So, you know, sometimes they just they feel like feel like being cool and other times they, uh, 
toughest are unhappy, so it is what it is. Mm. You go signifer Ross River. And those are big signifers. I mean, if you've seen the other signifers, they're only like an yeah. inch and a half. These guys these are two huge. And a half, three inches. Um, the Harvey's Creek gets a little bit bigger than these, but, but this is salt water, 1.011, so about a cup and a half salt water. Um, and the, the tank is in badly need of a water change, so they're not as cool looking as they normally do. But when they get those fins out, those bright yellow demarcations on the edges, they're flipping the fins back and forth. And now that we're looking at them, they're, they're jumping away. But uh, it's just a really cool fish, but you got to be able to handle the salt. That's that's the deal. Uh, you ever do see the Pseudomagill Luminatus while you're, while you're down there? Never thought I'd see a beta in here, though. Yeah, well, I, I got, <laughs> I haven't, I've never turned in bettas for the uh, for Breeders' Awards, so I saw those when I was in San Francisco. I had a nice group, so I've got to, I've got to get those in a tank and breed them, so do a little bit of photography work. That's Luminatus, so Pseudomagill Luminatus, nice, nice orange colors to them. It's a horrible wreck to take pictures out of, but mm. at least you get an idea. And sometimes you get down on those fish and you look at them, and then they, then they hide on you. Uh -huh. So that's what happens. I think I, hopefully I've got that cleaned up enough, as you can see. But those are mm. this uh, Pseudomagill pygmaea. That's the fish that uh, Jerry Allen had to climb up the waterfall to get. Um, and uh, and by the time he got back to the boat, the tide had gone down, so he had to go hand over hand with the with the, uh, the bag of fish in his, in his, in his back sack. And uh, the crocodile were swimming below on the water, so he said he thought, <laughs> the, uh, thought the guys were betting whether he was gonna fall in or not from the ship. So oh my. But just a cool fish, and that's pretty much full grown. They get a little bit bigger than that, but uh, Pygmaea really lives up to its name. But uh, I don't know if those colors are coming through for you or not, but uh, they it's are. an active, and that's, that's what you need. You need 15, 20 fish in a tank like that because they just really, really really show it off so I think one of the cooler small rainbow fish around very cool well those fish are recovering from velvet so they're finally getting getting better those rainbow those bozeman eye are full grown though those are chrome mm. chrome so maybe maybe a little bit bigger what's than that. this one yeah yeah all these all these little rainbow fish yeah yeah. yeah but what's that, that, that one that, that's a running river splendida that's pretty yeah there he, he's got a lot more growing to do but uh, but those Bozeman, that's pretty much full size from this Chromesis. And I've got to get those back into a tank pretty soon and get get those breeding. But the, fortunately, that tank right now is a little bit on the unhealthy side. It uh, had some had some uh, uh, velvet go through there, so not making everybody very happy at all. So okay, you want to stay down here while you're down? Yeah, here? yeah. Do the Craycocks from the guy. I'm on my uh, this is my F2 generation, so they're they're getting a little bit old in the tooth now too. But uh, but we collected those in 2008. Um, uh, the prairie cocks don't live quite as long. I'd say maybe about five or six years, maybe a little bit longer than that. But uh, nice blues. Um, you know, you see these fish in the hobby that are getting three, three and a quarter inches. That's fish that the uh, the, the Florida wholesalers and fish breeders had crossed with other things. So they still look kind of like prairie cocks, but they they have funky stripes in them, and they don't have as good of blues and everything. So. We had to go back and collect these in 2008 because they had messed them up so bad. What do you want to do next while you're on the floor here? Uh, does that look like a Bozeman eye? Oh, it's not a Bozeman eye. It's got more more uh, fins in, in the dorsal rays and the anal rays. That's Melanotini iamarensis. So the nice orange ones that look like Bozeman eye, those are iamarensis. And then the other one I have in there got from Eric Podrock, and I can't, I gotta remember the name of it, because I'm just growing them up right now. Uh, they're uh, Goldie Eye from Kiura, K-I-U-R-A, so I've, I'm not taking any eggs out of this tank. When you have a mixed set, uh, tank like this, you never take any eggs out, and there's so many fish in there that if any mm -hmm. fish hatch, they get eaten immediately, mm -hmm. so you don't have to worry about any crosses, but the I've got something else in there too. I can't remember what's oh fasciata from ungulum that are that are still in. I knew I, I could see something else that was in there, and I've got uh, an, an ornata type in there also. So mm. it was at, from Adelaide River. You know, I had some little little guys that I knew knew wasn't the wasn't the fish, but, but those fish they they anyamarensis. You can see see how the colors are a little bit different than the uh, than the bozeman eye. 
Mm -hmm. And that you sort of see some stripes in there, and, and they get bigger, so they need they need to still put some size on them, but uh, but they they have some some decent colors too. So everything's a little bit different. So we just skip that tank. Yeah. Um, this is a, a, an Alfinis. The bright blue ones here are an Alfinis from from very close to Lake Santani, from the original from one of the original collection sites. So that was the original description when we looked at the DNA of that fish. It definitely was different than the the fish from uh, from the Finnis Pagway, so we know that the Finnis Pagway is something different. Since this fish was described first, it still will be a Finnis. Um, there are also some some uh, nigrans in here. These guys are, are nigrans. There's a nice male here. Well, he's getting a little old in the tooth now, but long in the tooth. But you get an idea. That's nigrans from Scotts Creek, also. So different locations mm -hmm. look a little bit different. So what do I have up here? Um, I've got some uh, odds and ends fish. I can say that a lot, don't I? <laughs> so the species ungulum is in here, though, and let's see if we can find a couple of uh, decent-sized males. I know there's some fish in here. They're not growing near as fast as the awolum, but you can see that guy there. And they, they get they get more blue, probably, than the other one. They're, they're also pretty. We caught those fish. Um, they were only maybe 10 miles apart. They were the, both, both the Chilothena awolum and ungulum were very close together, but... Uh, they, they do look a little bit different, so it's kind of a good one to have. I'm not sure what we got going on here with these. We've got the Amari here. Move the light forward, maybe that'll help. But the uh, Melanotania Amari. And they're not showing their colors as, as good as they could. It's, yeah, it's they like get maybe, really golden, don't yeah, they? they? Yeah, they get very, very golden. I think it's maybe it's time for a water change on that tank. Maybe that's what the problem is. But uh, they're not showing as good of colors as I normally get on them. But that's that's certainly a worthy fish to uh, mm -hmm. uh, to get. So we're gonna go back in the other room and get that other wreck. I think we got yeah. everything here. I've got. Oh, you want to get some of these? Okay. Rotus. So you got the R Rotus. We've got the. Uh, I've got a little group of uh, Kabaya over here, so they're not. They're, they're just I've just got two females in there so I got to get going they need to be a little bit bigger but they're they're starting to throw eggs so I'm going to collect them all I got Is that oh that's a glosso uh, uh, yeah that's glossolepis cabaya so that's a short finned variety so that was the one we've almost lost so I'm trying to get that one to work back up uh, this is a pseudomagill species from from that we collected in Dakai um it is not it is not uh, Gertrude and it's not RO2, so you don't see it's got doesn't have nice long hooks on it like the RO2 on the anal fin, but uh, it's a different species, and that's something I have to hopefully describe this year or next year. That's what I'm talking about. Now these guys are Pseudomagill reticulatus. These are oh, this cool. This is the aquarium strain that's been around for a while. I had a lot of trouble getting these getting these raised up. The eggs would just about hatch, and they just end up dying in the shell. I'm getting better at that now, but I've got to go back and start breeding those again before I, uh, before I lose them. Everything else in the and top rack is pretty much tons of babies fr and juvies and, and yeah, fry racks that are starting to raise up. So rainbows on rainbows on rainbows. Yeah, you know, hopefully all these ten-gallon tank fish are in these ten gallons will go someplace else, and those will be raised raised for juvenile. So that's that's one thing I need to uh, need to get the space and just always seem to be out of space. So that seems to be the seems to be the the difficulty. It's the fish. Fish collector's problem, biggest problem. Melanotania um, species uh, is not exquisita, but it really looks like an exquisita. Supposedly the DNA is different, so um, I'm looking forward to seeing what the when they do the description on that in Australia. But it's got a very very tiny egg, so um, the fry are coming out really really small, probably even smaller than Werner I fry. So which mm. which surprised me because I raised wow. exquisita years ago, and I never had any problem with that. Now I'm having I'm having some problems with that fish, but the, mm. it's one of those things. Sometimes you have to work on those and and get them going. So, see, I think everything else in here was fries, pretty much. So you don't have to right. worry about those. Can before. check out that other egg. Oh, oh you sure you can check out this guy right there? That's a Chilothena from Cali Rum, and that and when she's on, she's or when he's on, he's really really pretty. There's a Pianofon Creek fish in there too, but the Chilothena that looks like a Fasciata type. That's the one that's. I've got a male and two females in there, and I've got to get the other fish out of there and start breeding those because it's that's something different. Again, you see the red pectorals on that; yeah. those are kind of kind of cool. When the light hits it from outside, they really get excited and get really pretty. So I've got a window behind there that uh, really gets them gets them keeps them happy. So. 
how do you get the hose down in there? How do I get the hose? So I've got, oh, air, wait. They've got an airline that goes down and they've got oh, a rigid, down all the a, way. It's a rigid airline that goes down to there. So I like how to, this yeah. is. Uh, that's the best way to, that's the absolute best way to hatch brine shrimp. You want to do those 24 hours, but I didn't do brine shrimp yesterday because we were at the meeting. So this one's overkill and this one's ready for today. So um, I've got to do this, but what I do is I take the take the airline out, put it put it on a, a lower table, put a light next to it, attract the uh, baby brine shrimp, and then use another piece of rigid airline tubing, uh, rigid airline uh, rigid tubing with air with tubing on the side of it to siphon them out. It sits for about five minutes. Then you collect all the nice uh, orange stuff. You leave the brown stuff there. You know, I don't like to get brine shrimp eggs in my in my fish tanks. It makes a mess. It makes it real easy. Will they fungus up and stuff in the tank, brine eggs? No, but it just it just makes it a just mess. Makes a and mess. Some, some babies eat the baby brine shrimp. You know, I've heard people say with Corydoras, they eat the baby brine shrimp eggs and the, and the, the, the and then they, they get their intestines clogged up. So this is a new fish that's from the airstrip and from it's Yago pretty. Village. So, uh, and he's not showing as pretty as he can get, but come on, turn sideways, turn sideways, but but he's, he's going to be a pretty fish. The Rawara village looks very much like that, and some of the other fish we caught on the bird's head have those same sorts of orange patterns to them. So, you know, we went to a lot of, collected in a lot of different creeks over there, and, and we're waiting for the DNA to make sure what, what sorts out. But uh, still, still a work in progress. Very cool. That's the way that sometimes you have to wait for people to do their work so you can see what's going on. We can track over here, so we'll have to come back. Take a look, look here. Oh yeah, I don't want to miss these guys. Yeah, these are the Blythe River, and they've still got some growing to do. They get probably redder than the Goiter River, and, they're, and from what I've been told, the rivers are fairly close together, what I remember. Um, lots of red. Again, it's in Aboriginal uh, territory, so they have to get permission to go in there to fish, and usually don't give it very often, so they've gone in a few times to collect. So uh, you want to get this fishing keep them going but they produce lots of eggs for me and got lots of females in there like three males so they're very very happy boys really nice nice fish i love these fish these it's are one of my you, favorites you, you got yours going now right so i got a couple so unfortunately i didn't clean that you're probably getting a reflection off that dark. okay well, we're back to the last rack here we'll get back to this glossal ankylosis spotted ones look look at right there. That oh, guy yeah. right there, you get some nice colors in him showing up. So, so that helped to put the flashlight on him. So. Almost looks like a lure you yeah. buy. Yeah. Like a Rapala. But but they're very small fries, so they take a take a lot of work to, to raise up. And uh, I don't get a whole lot of eggs out of that, but uh, that's one that's on the list to, to do. So hopefully uh, by next spring I'll have some of those out and available to people. It's a that unique cool. pattern yeah. for a rainbow yeah, fish. It is, definitely with those cool little dots. And that was also recollected by Michael Wagner. So just like the Lacoustra set we're going to look at, um, he collected that one on the Papua side, the eastern side of New Guinea, which I don't go to. So uh, can't get over to that side. So. These, are, these are F2 Lacoustras. They're not looking all that happy right now, but you know how Lacoustras go. They go back and forth. He would be much better if he was in a planted tank. Also known as turquoise. Turquoise rainbow, yeah. And he, he's got, certainly can be a lot bigger. I've got two females and a male in there, so. Um, the other male that I had was a, a, an F1 male. Um, killed killed the female, so I had to wait until the F2s came up to start breeding them, so. Just nice nice fish, starting to starting nice to get some eggs. Starting to turn on a bit. Oh yeah, the tepene. These are, remember we said Goldie Eye, make sure you know your location. It's Milanitania goldii tepini. Nice red eye. And uh, you know, none of these other, yeah, I guess they do have, th these These other Aru-2s have a gold, uh, red eyes too, but the Aru-4s down there, oh, those, yeah, are, those are goldii they. DNAs. Whether they're goldii eye or not, we don't know, but uh, so, some of the other fish have, have red eyes, so that's yeah, maybe not, that's got a few more too. It's not totally indicative of, uh, that we were talking about red eyes and our multi squamata, but uh, mm. they do have that. But, but it's, it's a nice fish if you ever, I'm, and I'm starting to get a few more eggs out of these, and hopefully I'll have some of these available. But uh, it's something that we need to, to get going. So if you like cold water fish, though, 
these guys down here. This is a Chilorthina campsite. That's right, cold water rainbow fish. It goes guys. from really high, uh, you know, we're talking uh, six, 68, 70 degrees versus 75. And they probably go good at 60 degrees. No, I was going to get a little upset because I moved those mm -hmm. lights on it. But uh, good size mm -hmm. rainbow. And, and so when I breed those, I tend to try to get the eggs out when it's still fairly cold. So this winter, I'll get those out, turn up the uh, the aeration on the tank so they get some going, but they come from pretty fast water moving streams, so that's why they go good that way. Fast tank over, I didn't clean the glass on this one at all, so maybe you can see some. Here's odds and ends in there. There's a really nice um, Anornata from Crater Lake in there, this Splendida from Crater Lake, and there's also some Chilorthian and Centeniensis that I have to uh, keep working on and breed those very shortly, so I get some of those out. So Anornata. And, and, and this one. Centaniensis. Centaniensis. Lake Centaniensis. Pretty fish. Yeah, they are. I gotta get I gotta get working on those too. So, so I think that we awesome. maybe missed a tank or two, but I think we got most of them. So give, right. me, give cool. me an idea. So it's a lot of work. Anybody want to come over and volunteer and clean grill? No. <laughs> <laughs> You'll yeah. probably get people yeah. to take you yeah. up on that. Yeah, I know. I'm sure you yeah, will. Yeah, I, I wouldn't let people. That's a, that's a problem. <laughs> so it's like, ah, it's, it's my fish. I gotta. Do we we looked at these, didn't we? Chill thin Yeah, the okay. Okay. I believe yeah. so. Yeah, okay. If not here, you guys not, go. Yeah, yeah they, they get they get going, and, and I've only got one female in there. I've got some juveniles coming up, but I've gotta I've gotta get working on that fish too because that's I think that's an important fish to get out because. They grow incredibly slow. They make a bozeman I look like a fast grower. Wow, but, really? Uh, but they're really, they're really worth playing with. So I've got to, got to get going on those. Well, very cool. With that, I guess we ought to end our tour and yeah, Gary, get you on your long, it. long drive back to Indianapolis. All right, so. right. Well, thank okay. you so much okay. for having Thanks. me. All Thanks. All right. Appreciate it, guys. Sounds good, thank you. We didn't even know what the hell they were. Just picked up a bunch of baby fry at one tank to get them in. Yeah, and it came out like that. Yeah. yeah. That's um, cool. And got those and was like, oh, cool, very cool. Love these Bowman eyes. The, yeah, I, I, I got some bettas when I was in um, in San Francisco. So, yeah, they've been sitting in that tank for a weekend. I'm going to, I think I'm probably going to move them into the. Um, uh, the the, the, the bottom of my uh, my fry rack, put him, put her down there and put him on the side on all those meridian things and then breed them down. Hey, shrimp cannot take 82 degrees, right? Um, they can. Will, will they take you it? just gotta feed them more. Okay, so if I put if I put them in my sump, they'd be okay. There was like a like that, so they could crawl on that. But. Yeah. And I've also seen them crawling around in 100 degree water. Okay, well I'll, I'll try them that way, but I, they gotta be where plants. Fish aren't. And I think right. I got. I was getting baby rainbow fish showing up in the sump, and oh, yeah. I, I redid all the sponges. So yeah. I think I've got that solved. And I go in there today, and there's more fish in there. It's like okay. <laughs>